Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're digging into a special report about Europe's weather forecast for late August 2025. We want to pull out the key insights for you. Our mission really is to understand the links between heat waves, uh, severe storms, and, well, the impact of climate change. Yeah, we're aiming to help you see the bigger picture here. Let's jump in. Okay, so if we look at that bigger picture, the report, um, it paints a pretty clear scene. Europe is warming up much faster than other continents, about twice the global average rate since the 80s, believe it or not. And the IPCC, you know, the big international climate body, they confirm hot extremes are definitely on the rise. What's really striking, I think, is how the baseline itself has moved. The World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, they're saying there's like an 80% chance that at least one year between 2025 and 2029 will actually be warmer than 2024. 80%, wow. Yeah, so these aren't, you know, freak events anymore. The report really hammers this home, they're becoming the new normal, the regular feature of summer in Europe. It means we need to shift how we think, you know? Yeah. From just dealing with odd events to adapting to this recurring pattern. That definitely changes the perspective on summer weather. Okay, so let's focus on late August 2025 then. The report mentions a key driver uh, for what's expected, this heat dome. What exactly is that? Right. The main thing is this very strong and persistent heat dome. Think of it like a lid, basically. A big area of high pressure sitting over a region, trapping hot air underneath it. And the report projects this is going to cause a really severe, long-lasting heat wave. It stretches across huge areas, France, the UK, Central Europe, even into Western Russia. We're talking daytime highs in the upper 30s, maybe even low 40s Celsius. And there was something specific about this heat wave, wasn't there? Something about the nights. I remember the report highlighting that. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's a critical point. The report really focuses on the nighttime temperatures staying significantly above average. And this is important for you because it means your body doesn't get that crucial cool down period overnight. No recovery time. Oh, okay. So you get this dangerous buildup of heat stress day after day, which is um, a major health risk, particularly for older people or those with health conditions. Plus, this intense heat makes existing drought conditions much worse, right. drying everything out, creating a really critical fire risk, especially mentioned for Southern European Russia. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around that intense heat and severe storms happening together. Yeah. But the report talks about this weird paradox. Yeah. The heat actually helps fuel the worst storms. How does that work? Yeah, it seems contradictory, doesn't it? But it's yeah. where you really see the interconnectedness, that yeah. intense heating at the surface under the heat dome. It builds up enormous energy in the atmosphere. Uh, technically, it's called convective available potential energy. Mm -hmm. But just think pressure cooker. So the heat wave isn't separate. It's actively loading the dice for severe storms. Then when you get a trigger, maybe air being forced up over mountains like the Alps or the Caucasus, it releases all that stored energy violently. That can lead to these really intense, slow-moving thunderstorms. We're talking torrential rain, flash floods, massive hail. The report mentions the North Caucasus is actually a global hotspot for damaging hail and strong winds, too. Okay, so that leads us to the North Caucasus. The report seems particularly concerned about that region for you. What makes it such a complex and dangerous spot? It really is a concerning mix there. For the North Caucasus, you're looking at extreme heat down in the lowlands. Cities like Baku, Yerevan, Tbilisi could see those high 30s, low 40s Celsius temperatures. But at the same time, the forecast shows high confidence in daily severe thunderstorms popping up over the mountains. So heat and storms right next to each other. Exactly. And the most critical added danger there's the real compounding factor, is faster glacial melt because of the heat. The report actually points to a terrible mud flow event in Georgia in the Racha region back in August 2023. That was triggered by heavy rain and glacier melt combined. Yeah. And it warns there's a dangerously similar setup possible for late August 2025. That hugely increases the risk of destructive debris flows, uh, mud flows coming down from the mountains. It's a frightening combination of hazards. So if we tie all this together, what's the main message we should take away from this forecast this deep dive? I think the key thing is that these aren't separate problems. The heat wave, the drought, the fire risk, the severe storms, the mud flows, they're all linked. They're systemic. Mm -hmm. You've got the heat dome setting off a chain reaction, really. One hazard makes the next one worse. And this pattern, this compounding of extreme events, it's a clear sign, uh, a definite hallmark of our warming climate. Yeah, it really drives that home. This isn't just a one-off bad forecast. Is it? It's more like a preview of Europe's new climate reality and, and suggests we need to move beyond just reacting when disasters happen. We need to be more proactive, prepared. So for you listening, maybe the big question to ponder is this. 
Knowing these kinds of interconnected risks are becoming more common, what does proactive preparedness actually look like in your own community? How does this change things?